Okay, everybody, uh, welcome to my talk, Accessibility in Drupal is my jam. Hopefully you got the reference from music. Uh, practical use of accessibility tools in Drupal. So um, let's get started. So hello there, my name is Kat Shaw. I'm a senior front-end developer at Lullabot. Um, we are hiring, and uh, if you're interested, uh, reach out to me or any other bot that's here. Um, and I have, that, that's linked, and that goes to the jobs page on our site. I will be sharing the slides. Um, and uh, actually, I'll give, I'll be, I have a link on here in a moment. Um, I have um, over 13 years of experience in local government. Um, when I worked at Douglas County, Kansas, um, as their webmaster. They actually called me that for years. Um, I have over 10 years of experience in accessibility and Drupal. And you can find me at Kat Ann Shaw on uh, Drupal, uh, GitHub, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Um, I live in Perry, Kansas, which is about an hour outside of Kansas City. And I am a huge Chiefs fan and Jayhawks fan. So that's a little bit about me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So a few quick notes. Um, if you want to jot this down, these slides, hopefully this, this link is correct. And if it's not, I'll send you a new one. But that is the, the link um, where you can find these slides in PDF format. So does anybody else need to get that down? Is it, or has everybody gotten that? OK. And I will add that to my. Um, my presentation page um, on the site to make it easier so if you forget it or whatever, that's fine. A few quick notes, um, additional, um, I want to give a shout out to the Tugboat team um, at Lullabot, um, well, part of Lullabot. Um, it provides a data first testing and review of environments within a serverless platform. If you want to know more about them, go to tugboat.qa. Um, a, a specific shout out to James and Ben Chavez, James Sanbury and Ben Chavez. Um, James is in the back right there. He's awesome. He helped me set up the Tugboat instance that we're going to be using for the demo. So it's really awesome. Um, I um, also wanted to mention uh, some common terms you'll hear through the talk. Uh, one is called WCAG, um, and that means Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. And the other one is ALI, and that's short for accessibility. So what that is is the A, and then the 11 characters in the middle, and the Y, and that's where ALI, that term comes from. Okay, so what we'll cover is um, we will first cover some core themes um, and then we'll focus on a couple of them specifically. Then we'll cover the core features and modules in Drupal, then some contributed modules, and then we'll go over some questions if we have time. So I'll do my best to rush through this, so. Okay, so number one, uh, core themes. So core themes is a small group of themes that are installed in every instance of Drupal core. And uh, let's just check, check them out. Um, so first up we have Bartik. It is the default theme starting in Drupal 7, or has been. Um, it's due to be replaced by Olivero in Drupal 10. Then we have Claro, um, which um, is working towards being the default admin theme in Drupal 10. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. Um, Christina is here at the top at the um, camp. So, if you have any questions about Claro, you should definitely reach out to Christina. She's really Message great. You. Catherine's MacBook Pro. Okay. Speaker. Yep. <laughs> then there's Classy and Stable. Um, classy is a sub theme of Stable with classes, and Stable aggregates all CSS um, from core into a single theme, making it stable. Um, then there's Olivero, which is working towards being the default main theme in Drupal 10, and we'll talk about that one in a moment. Then there's Seven, which is a super simple gray on gray kind of admin theme, and we all know Seven. Um, definitely a less is more approach, and um, it's due to be replaced by Claro in Drupal 10, I think I mentioned that. And then Stark um, is for demo purposes only, for troubleshooting, and should not be used as a base theme. So um, I want to focus on two specific um, themes that I just mentioned, Claro is marked as experimental in core right now. Hopefully we'll get it over that line and it'll be stable. Um, it is the admin theme based on seven. It's use, it uses Drupal's admin design system. It's got a fresh look and feel throughout the admin interface. 
and um, I will demo it right now. So this is um, Claro. Um, so this is just adding the add content page. So if you've um, ever seen Seven, you, it doesn't look like this. <laughs> so you can see how nice it looks if I um, tap through the focus. Visibility is really nice. You can see that the error messages are really clear. So it's a, it's a really great theme. And um, if I went through, um, I could show you tons of stuff, but obviously I'm going to quickly demo. And I'll be showing the, uh, the Claro theme as I go through this a lot. You'll be seeing a lot of the stuff. So, And then um, Olivero is the new front-facing theme, replacing Bartik. Um, it in Drupal 10. It's a clean user experience and customization. It's got a modern look and feel. And um, both of these themes were uh, built with accessibility in mind from the beginning, which is really, really important. So if I uh, demo that, I'll just go to the homepage. So this is um, this is Olivera out, out of the box. Um, this is you know what you get, and it's blue. You can actually go to the admin settings and change this to gray, I think it is, and um, one other color. Um, you could see it has these pretty cool um, navigation drop downs like that, and it's also keyboard accessible. So if I go here, like that, you see how it just skips over? But if I go back and I click enter, I can get into it. So that's completely keyboard accessible, which is great. And you can see all of the links are all, uh, the visibility is very clear. So uh, it's, it's a great, it's a great theme. And it's um, definitely a step up from Bartik. I think everybody knows Bartik. Go ahead. Yeah, real quick, main question, and you can say I'll get to that later. So is there a, a basic uh, start thing that is accessible optimized? That's, this one is. Okay. This one. So you can build on top of this. Yes. This one was built with accessibility in mind from the start. So, so start yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and that's really important for both of those. But uh, Olivero, when you have like your base theme, you can add to it, and it's got that built in. So, yeah, absolutely. I think that that you know, I think they're going away from like the what is it sub theme, and, and they're going with starter kits, if I remember right. So I think there's some talk about like how they're going to do that with themes in the future with Drupal. So, okay, so next up, um, <clears throat> let me go here. Next up, we have uh, core features and modules. So uh, Drupal comes with some great accessibility features out of the box, which is really great. Um, and we'll go over some of those right now. So first up is semantic markup. So. Um, Drupal uses semantic HTML5 elements, which is clean and better for screen readers. Um, it's definitely the number one way you should go um, when you're doing things. So an example would be, would be button elements instead of using like div tags with role equals button. Um, you definitely want to go with just the native controls um, because if you used a div with a role equals button, you can't, um, a user cannot use the space bar to, to um, use that button. So um, but the use of ARIA is, is important with things like landmark roles, live regions, um, roles properties for screen readers. An example of that would be an alert message. So um, you do need to use that in that case. The use of headings for page level navigation, um, that would be, a, an example would be headings uh, navigation via screen reader. So um, a screen reader can pull up links and headings and different things with, with what they call a rotor and they can um, navigate through a page um, easily using the headings or the links and different elements on the page. So um, headings and having them in the proper order is very important. Um, removal of bad coding practices. So a good example of that would be moving inline CSS into style sheets. Um, working towards additions of Claro and Olivero as default themes is another move towards good semantic markup. And um, the I'll just demo it, uh, an example of that with the uh, skip to main content uh, link, actually. I can get over there. And I'll refresh the page. So one of the requirements with, with WCAG is 
that when you refresh a page, the first link you should see is a skip to main content. You see that right here? Okay, so it, it comes there, and if I click enter, and I click tab, I'm in the main content section right away. If I refresh the page again, and I start tabbing, you'll notice because I'm logged in, I'm going all the way through all of these links. And if you're um, a, a keyboard exclusive uh, user or a screen reader user, you're gonna have to go through all of those links every single time you load a page, and that's very, very frustrating, obviously. You can imagine having to do that with every single page load. So that's why the skip to main content is a requirement for every page. And so Drupal's made that um, a requirement out of the box for a Drupal site. So you don't even have to worry about it. It's already there. So, so one more that modal is part of the theme? This is, this is part of Drupal. Th these are core, Drupal core accessibility improvements. So if I've got a third party theme and that's not showing up, is that like a, an admin setting or something? That's something that up with your theme that might be, um, like the CSS might be hiding it or something like that. But core itself, out of the box, should have that available. As a 9.2 or 9.2? Um, I think since eight, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Definitely a theme. Yeah, so like, yeah. And if it's hiding it, then there's something up with your theme and you should def definitely should check into that. How do you get that skip to main content to show? Because I know that's in the HTML yeah. accessibility, but what's making it actually show? I'll actually show that later. Okay. Um, I'll show you um, what, how you can. Do, I'll show you what's doing that, and I'll show you how you can do that with other things on your site. So it'll be great. Yeah. So next up is um, control tabbing. So control tabbing uses the uh, Drupal um, tabbing manager to access actionable elements in logical order. Um, it constrains keyboard tabbing within a window, so like modals as an example. And um, we're actually going to be testing with the modal module, which is actually a pretty good module to uh, install and check out. So if I go here and I go to my modal test page, it's just a regular web page, but it pulls up a modal because I've set that up with the modal module. And you can see if I go here and I click the tab key, it, the tabbing stays within the modal and it doesn't go behind it. And that's really important because if um, you, you'll notice on some sites when you do that um, and you start clicking tab, it'll go behind the modal and then this stays here and you're not able to view the page. And so that's actually another requirement with WCAG. And that's specific for a focus order, 2.4.3 focus order. So there's two ways I can dismiss this. I can close it like that or if I refresh this page again and I'll put it back up for you. Like this. Let me know when you're. Oh, you, you got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I can use my mouse and click out. So it's 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 device independent. It's not just for mouse users. It's also for keyboard users. And just so you know, when things work for keyboard users, they're generally going to use work for screen reader users because they use the same uh, techniques. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Focus handling. Um, So focus is visible by default in Drupal. Um, options um, to hide, this is what we were talking about, uh, you were asking about. There's uh, four main ways to hide content. So there's visually hidden. There's visually hidden with focusable, which is how the skip to main content link is handled. The, you have hidden and then you have aria hidden. And I'm gonna just talk about this and then I'll, I'll demo both. Form field sets um, are groups related a group of related elements in a, a form for better organization. Um, radio buttons and checkboxes use field sets and advanced search results use it by default. So let's demo both of those right now. So, so focus handling, let's see, go to the Good Alley page. So you were asking about the uh, skip to main content and how that works. So you can see this list right here. There's there's four list items, but three of them are hidden. If I go here and I tab through, you see how that appears? That's exactly how the skip to main content link works. But then I go away and it goes away. So if I look at the code on that, and uh, let me uh, blow this up, sorry. You'll see it says visually hidden and focusable. So that means it's hidden from us as visual users, but for screen reader users, they're, they're, that'll get read aloud to them. 
and then when you focus on it, it'll be visual, and then when you take focus off, it'll be hidden again. And that's how the skip domain content link works. Is that's all you do is just add this, these CSS classes, these two CSS classes, and you can make that work that way. What's the focus of we'll do though? Is that, that displays it when it's focused. When it's focused. Okay. Yeah. If you look at this one, there's actually another link right here. This is visually hidden. It doesn't have focusable. So this is read aloud to the screen reader, but it's not focusable, so it does not appear when I tab through. Okay. I'm going to read it with the screen reader in a moment, so you'll be able to see the difference. Okay. And you use opacity or display none? Yeah, that, that's um, display none. I think I have on one of these. Let me see. I have hidden right here. Um, let's see which does display none. Okay. So you just add the class hidden, and then, I'm trying to think, I might have added that. No, that's a, that's a, uh, I believe that's a CSS class. And then aria hidden equals true, um, I added here. And um, so the difference between those, the aria hidden true makes the content invisible to screen reader users completely. Um, you don't want, you want to make sure that's not focusable, because if it's hidden and it's focusable, that's gonna create problems for the screen reader. The hidden hides the content completely for everybody, or, or yeah, for all users. Um, an example would be a toolbar tab to hide the preview until the JavaScript event makes it visible. Um, and you don't want to do that for form labels. So you want that to be visually, uh, you want that to be available for screen reader users. So I'm going to demo this with a screen reader. Let me close this up. Oh, does the uh, speaker go off? I don't think it's your, your computer is doing voiceover? Yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, you want I need it on. Battery 5. Connected to Catherine's MacBook Pro and iPhone. Speaker. System preferences. Sound. Window. Sound output devices. Table. Row 3 of 6. Name. Chrome. Good A11. Good visited. Link. Skip to main content. Good A visited. Link. Skip to main okay. content as. Chrome has visited link. Open focus has visited link. Visually hidden link. List four That's items. Chrome has new window. Visited link. Visually hidden focusable link. You are visited link. Aria hidden link. You are current visited link. 123 4th Street. Together, article. You are currently on a link. To click this link, Can press control, option, hidden, space. It's still, it's still there. It doesn't have the hidden. If I added hidden to this, it would go away. Um, so that's the difference between those four. Does, do you have any questions on this? It's so the area, that's a little confusing what it was going when it was speaking, but the area hidden link, that it just skipped that with, uh, with the voice? It, it went to this one. Um, Chrome has new window. Yeah. So already hidden, let me see. Presenter view, accessibility in Drupal is my jam. Google Slides, Google Chrome, cat, window. You are current good a visited, 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 link. Aria hidden link, Chrome has new window. Visited, link, aria hidden link. You are currently on a link. To click this link, press control, option, space. Application, control center, voice over off. You have to add hidden class to hide this too from the page. But yeah, it is getting written, or hit read. So yeah, I'm not sure. What would be an example of why you would hide something visually but want it to show up, like be read aloud on a screen reader? Like, what's an example of the situation where you want that? Um, like, a if you have a search form and you want the label, you don't want the label, yeah. especially on like a header, and you want it so that it, the screen reader knows it's a search form. But you don't, you you know, you're a visual user, you see it's a search and you see the icon, you're used to that. That would be an example of where you'd want to hide the label. Gotcha. So. Can you show the, the CSS oh, visually hidden? Yes. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's right there. But this is, with, this is within Drupal, you don't have to do this, this is all... All you have to do is add the CSS class, okay. and Drupal already has this written. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank okay. You. Yes. Okay. Cool. So let's see so where we're at. Okay, we're about halfway through, so I'm going to have to.
ぱいいるだろう。You're okay. We have a little bit of time, but we have time to paint sessions. Okay, cool. Okay, so next up is JavaScript and jQuery. So this is what I understand. I might be wrong, but I think Drupal drops jQuery UI from core in Drupal 8.、Um, it was used for autocomplete or is used for autocomplete and views UI.、Um, JavaScript in、um, Drupal 8、um, has moved to asset libraries, meaning that you don't need to load all assets on all pages.、Um, And it uses Drupal behaviors.、Um, it has plain JavaScript that provides device independence. So, an example would be it's not in,、um, exclusive to mouse users,、um, which is what I was mentioning earlier.、Um, and if we show, if I just show an example, it'll just be me going to, let's see. Actually, I might be able to just do it on this page. If I look at the sources on this page and I go here to core,、um, nope, I'm going to go over here. So if I go to core and I go to, what is it? Sites default files and JS, these are the JavaScript files that are loaded for this page specifically. And It, it's really cool though because、um, you know, back in the day you used to load like, so much JavaScript for every single page, you remember that. But now within the YAML file, you can specify what JavaScript you want to load for which page, and, and it's really cool how、um, it's all set up.、Um, the next thing I want to talk about is our RL alerts.、Um, they change, there are changes on the page that are read aloud to screen reader users. They use the JavaScript method、um, Drupal Announce. Which provides announcements that users can hear when they, you've added、um, ARIA Live element to the page. And they use the, the WAI ARIA standards. So if I go back to job application, which I haven't shown yet, and I、uh, turn on voiceover. Voiceover on Chrome. Visit it. Job applicate. Speaker. Slide 12 of 25. Core features and mock manage. Toggle button. Toolbar items. Navigate and visit job. W. W. E. P. E. F. O. P. E. R. Phone number. Required invalid data. Edit text. 8. 785. 2. 2. 2. 200. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2
Um, right now, Drupal doesn't really have a way to handle those properly, so that's something they're working on with an issue, um, and hopefully it'll be dealt with. So if I go demo those, I will do uh, responsive images first. So this is an article. If I look at this right here, you can see in the source set it has different different images set for the different viewports. So it'll change depending on the size of the screen. And I don't know if I could do that with this actually. Squeeze your screen. Man. I could do that maybe. So you can see the image change depending on the size of the screen. And what's great about that is that um, when you when you're a mobile user, instead of having a big image that just go, gets smaller, it literally it's a much smaller image. And then when you're a, a tablet user, it's a, big, a a little bit bigger. And then when you're a desktop, it's, it's a bigger. It, it really does change the image size and the download size for that. Um, for the text editor, um, I wanted to show you. If I add a new article, <clears throat> so this is the text editor right here, just a basic one. If I go here, I can add content and it um, allows me to have a lot of uh, control. The message Hello. is Catherine's MacBook Pro and iPhone. And um, if I go to the configuration for this, You could see where I have a lot of control over everything that the editors um, add in. So this is the active toolbar right here. And I can add groups to the first or the second level. I can move any one of these into here. You'll notice that the underline is not added to the formatting because underlines really should be used just for links. And so um, I don't have that included in any of them. And actually, Drupal out of the box doesn't have underlines included, which is great. Um, and then you have all of these. And then I have some other modules that I've added and added to the, I've added to the formatting. So. With the word, so you, with accessibility, are you a firm believer then that all, all uh, anchors should have underlines? I like them to have underlines. I know some people don't, um, I, but I understand like headings not having underlines and like big headings and stuff like that. Um, but I think, I think that te um, links in body text should have underlines. Um, if they don't, they should be bold. But what the reason is because as a uh, like a colorblind user is okay. not gonna know, have any idea if it's a different color. I don't do that on my sites, but I want to be more accessibility focused. Yeah. That. I've heard that. It's just, and it's actually a requirement. If it's in body text, it actually is a requirement that it needs some kind of differentiator to make it stand out from the text around it. Um, but not so, just color? Not color. just color. It has to be a color and another differentiator. It has to be two differentiators. So, um, so you can see here you have a lot of um, things you can do limiting the different uh, kinds of tags that people can add. So that's great. Um, okay, next up. What was the two tools which you had on the wizard way with you said for some extra tools? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over those. I'm gonna try to speed through because I'm I'm a little bit behind. Or I'm a lot behind I think actually. Um, <laughs> okay, views. Um, I'm gonna just show I'm going to just keep the demo site open and I'm just going to talk about it instead of switching views on the home page. I created, I, this is the front page out of the box, but what I did is I adjusted it and I added read more links within views. So if I look at this in code, um, what I did is I added an ARIA label that has read more about and it has the title from here just with views. So I'm able to make that a, an accessible read more link instead of it just saying read more. Um, for a screen reader user, when they see those links, those read more links, they just see read more, read more, read more, read more. They, that's all they see. That's not helpful to them. 
but when you add the ARIA label, the, this label here gets replaced by the ARIA label. And so that's very, very important to do. Um, I can uh, quickly, well, you know what? Um, we're running out of time, but I can, when I uh, send this, I, if anybody wants the snippet of code of like how to do that in views, just let me know and I can send that to you. So, um, inline form errors. Well, actually, I think I pretty much uh, sh showed you that by the, the inline form errors when I got that wrong. But um, if you go back here, and I click submit this and this right here, that's the inline form error mo module, um, places form errors in line within the form elements, adds a summary to the top, it's included in core but not enabled by default, it's a great module, um, I definitely suggest enabling that. When, when the page, when you submit the form and then it has an error, you mm -hmm. focus the user on the error, so it's read to the user? Yes. And you do that with JavaScript? It, it, Drupal core has that. So as long as you enable the module, uh -huh. it, it will do that by default. So it's gonna position the user in that, yes. in that message. Yes, because you. you remember when it was read aloud and, and, it'll, and it has that link, and if they click on that link, it'll go down to the error. Right. Yeah, it's great. Okay, um, next up is contributed module. So the Drupal community continues to shine with helpful accessibility tools. We'll go over some of those. Um, context storage is one. So, um, uh, so the job application I was looking at, um, contact storage is on top of the contact um, form. It provides you with a customizable on-screen and email confirmations. It stores their contact form submission so that they, you can contact them at a later date. It fulfills the WCAG requirement of both an email notification and an on-screen notification with meaningful status messages. So it's really cool in that way. Um, this is just where it stores the, the data, but you can um, do a lot of great things if you go into like the contact settings and, and the forms and stuff like that. Um, the style guide, I wanna get to that. So the style guide module allows you to test all the elements and components for accessibility on one page for each of your themes. This works for all installed themes. So right now I'm just on the, the um, page for the uh, Olivero theme. So for the Olivero theme, it shows you all of the different elements like this. So if you have your theme that's custom, you can add your theme to here and it'll show up on this page. And then you could test it. So this is list them or show problems? Well, I'll show you how you could show problems. It's great. So um, Olivero, if I go to Claro, Claro just pops up. I go to Bartik, Bartik pops up. So it switches them. And then um, I'll show you how you can use the style guide with something else to solve problems too. So. Okay, next up is block ARIA landmark roles and block class. So block ARIA landmark roles, um, it adds ARIA landmark roles and ARIA labels at the block level through the blocks UI. It, um, it's best used when you want, can't add it through your Twig templates. It's best um, practice to add through Twig or hooks or pre-processing, but when you need to add it to a block, it's fine to do this. Um, the block class um, is add CSS classes to your blocks through the blocks UI. Helps you to avoid inline CSS. Adds multiple CSS classes. You can do that with a space as a separator. And um, this is how that works. So here is the block ARIA landmark role settings. You can add the different roles right here. So you see main or search or whatever. So if you add a custom kind of block, you can do that right there. You can add an ARIA label right here. And then you can add multiple CSS classes here um, as you theme. So if you wanted to add one, you just add one. If you don't want to add more, you add a, a class, add a space, add another class, add a space, add another class. What was the third word in that? 
block aria. Block aria landmark roles. Landmark. Yeah, you don't have to. Um, I'll send these out, so you don't have to type anything. It's it's um. I'll get all this to you, no problem. Um, CK Editor Accessibility Auditor. So this provides a button in CK Editor that runs the HTML code sniffer when pressed. Um, results are shown right away. Let me, um, you were taught, this is what you were talking about. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go here, okay. Um, it uh, results are shown right away in a modal on the top right of the screen. Report shows the issue details and code snippets. So if I say, um, actually, I'm going to go, um, sorry. Uh, go to my bad alley page. So I'm going to show you a couple of tools here. Uh, if I first edit it, close this out and I click this here it runs this tool and you can see it pulls up a warning if I view the report it says the heading structure is not logically nested the h5 element should be an h4 to be properly nested and that's because this is an h2 this is an h3 and this is an h5 and that should be an h4 because it should be in a logical order it's always one two three four you can have like an H2, H2, but you don't go H2, H4. You, you do it in a logical order. Why is that important for accessibility? It's because, remember when I was talking earlier about the rotor thing? It's like a list. When I say rotor, it's a list that um, screen reader users pull up. Mm -hmm. It's because it actually puts it in like a, like a drill down, mm -hmm. and it's, it's confusing if you do it where you switch it to. Does it change the order in the screen reader, though? If, they're, like, if you have an H4 before an H3? Or is it just confusing? It's confusing, and it's, it's supposed to just be in a logical order. I mean, yeah. it's, just, okay. it's just the standard. So, I mean, the thing is, is you don't want to use the headings for styling, which is, I think, uh, what we kind of got used to. You really want to separate the styling from, like, the content, yeah. you know. And, and so what I do is if I have, like, an, H, uh, an H3 that needs to look like an H4, what I'll do is I'll create an H4 class, or an H3 class that looks like an H4. So... Um, so if I just change this to a H4 and rerun this, click this button again, it'll go away. So this is something you can use. Um, I'm going to change this back so you can show you in something else. But um, what is the name of the module? This is H. This is um, the CK Editor Accessibility Auditor. So um, and this is a contributed module. These are all contributed modules at this point. Um, and this here is HTML code sniffer. So it's an actual, I had this originally as a bookmarklet, but this is part of Drupal now as a, as a module. Um, the next one I want to show you, if I go back out of this page and I go to this part of the page, so the, that one we just showed, you're an editor and you can use that for your editors, which is great, right? While they're editing content. This one, you're on the page. You'll notice this little thing on the bottom right. When I click it, and it shows the same thing the other thing just showed. Can everybody see that okay? So if I click this, you see it shows an issue, and it takes me there, and it says the exact same thing as the other one. So it says the heading should form a, a page outline for screen readers, and it tells me what to do and to fix it and everything else. So when you go to the style guide, right, and you're on Olivero, I'm not going to do it to Olivero. I wouldn't do that to him. I'll do it to Bartik. I wouldn't do that to Herschel. Okay, so you can see right here, it has 14 issues, and I can go through each issue. And it highlights them, and it tells me what the issue is, and if I checker, it's JavaScript library based on Sally Accessibility Checker, um, and it's supported by Princeton University. Is that a Drupal module? Or it is. Oh, it is a Drupal okay. module. Um, and I can show the tags on the page so you can see it's logical so if it was not in a good order that would be bad but you, you can see it's tagged well um, wow. it's really cool okay. and it's very simple and it's very low profile so if you want to have this while you're building your theme it's a great one to have um, okay and actually I think Olivera would actually do really well I'm just joking um, high contrast um, oh, we're almost done. Look at that. That's not bad. 
I'm actually on time. Yay! <laughs> okay, high contrast. So this one I just added to um, this presentation because I got a question on Twitter from somebody about if there was a high contrast module. And there are this, this, there's a couple, but this one is the one that has the most uh, people that have downloaded it. So you um, install it, enable it, and then it has a block that you can add to any part of your site. I added it to the sidebar just to show you, and if I click it, it'll allow you to test for high contrast on your theme. And I click disable, and there it goes. And that's it on that. Pretty straightforward. Um, I'm sorry? It just reverses it. Exactly, yeah. So you can see if it works on both. Uh-huh. So high contrast mode is a specialized display mode that uses the user's specified theme by switching the foreground and the background color. Um, I was, my husband was actually asking me about this and I was trying to explain it. So some users have their own themes, templates, whatever you want to call them, in their browsers because they have different visual disabilities. So they might do that or they might have specific colors that work for their like they're, they're colorblind and only specific colors work for them. So they um, have a, a theme in their browser to change colors a certain way. And if you don't have your site set up properly and you have it so your background's always white and they try to switch it, it's not gonna work. So this allows you to test to make sure your website's set up properly so that it can switch and change for people when they um, change, the, change their thing. So that thing is injecting CSS with the Different colors? This is colors? actually it's switching the foreground and the background and it's changing it. Um, it's just recreating what they see when yeah. they have their specialized browser. Mm -hmm. So everything should switch. So if it wasn't working, then, you it know. It change your code. Yeah. So, yeah. It, so I can talk more about it in a little bit if you want. Um, and then the final one is CK Editor abbreviation. Um, I'll go back to, I'll have to go, add content here. So if I'm here, actually no, I'm sorry, go back. Okay, so I added these abbreviations here and I'll do this with a screen reader. So the CK Editor at abbreviation button, um, or the module adds a, a button to CK Editor for inserting and editing abbreviations. Um, when an existing abbreviation tag is selected, the context menu also contains a link to edit the abbreviation. The reason you want this is because when you add things like ST for street or DR for drive, you want somebody to know like if I hover over that, it says street or DR drive. But what I did is I turned these into links so that uh, you can hear what happens for our screen reader user when they're on this. And of course the speaker. It's not working again. Battery five. Connected to Catherine's MacBook Pro. Read and enter text selection. Good. Connected to iPhone. Link visited. Link visited. Visited. Link. 123 4th Street. Article. Chrome has new window. Visited. Link. 567 8th Drive. So you are currently on a link. To click this link, press Control, Option, Space. Voice over off. You see, even though it says ST, it says street. And the reason is because if I go here, this here was set with this tool, which is right here ST, and then street, the explanation. And in the code, it uses the, uh, if I look at the source code, let's see if I can that up. It has the abbreviation right here, which is read aloud to the screen reader. So it makes it usable. They understand what it is, so. And that is it. That, I think that's it. So I have some, let me go back to here because I have some so links. That abbreviation tag, but that's that's what it's intended for. Is yeah. For yeah, that's an HTML5. Yeah, I think that, but I didn't know that what its intention was. So yeah, it's it's well, it's it's intended for. Yeah, it definitely is. It's, it's, it's very helpful. Case, okay. So I have these links, and I'll be sharing the slides. But lots of great links for people. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll be uh, doing that. I just wanted to end with. Uh, <laughs> I had to end with a David Bowie quote. So um, we can all be heroes just for one day. 
Um, besides me wanting to fit in a Bowie quote, I just really do believe that collectively we can be heroes um, for those who just want to have content, just want to have access to content. It's really just that simple. So if we just use these tools and stuff, we can make that happen. Again, you can find me, Kat Ann Shaw, on Drupal, GitHub, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And I know we're out of time. So sorry about that. Thank you.